Bino sibi ya kugwa angabo ya subila Jino yu edi kaguta wa mseven Olukwe luya tega okutemula Chagulani sentamu Robert Bobwine Alumofu kide chambika Elaka wakati atambula itakatonda mlugudo Yejusa Chino rachi ya chikola Luachi ya chitandika Luachi ya chambala Echimo vili demu Evi zibunga vino vyo na evi mtu seko Chagulani ya muga maza siri muangu Siri ka ukanti oyenda kunye gavunye zibocho Kakati agava mawanga gaba zungu Bali nye wa wa sine wa guru abaga mba jeno msevi ni chisu se echimala chimala tatutani kendo uza wetu ti ugenda kumanya jeno msevi ni watu de ntikakati uocha awabidi de spokesperson comes out to say that they were they were in a procession yeah you see right that, that doesn't look like a procession and uh, besides yeah. even uh, overlooking that yeah why would you why would you really get that law to start kicking abusing your powers and abusing the right of a, of a, of the person who has not even thrown a stone okay he's just walking peacefully and if even if he had thrown a stone there should be means or legal ways of arresting the person who has committed crime so yeah. Now, yeah, but we cannot anticipate whether he, he, he would do he did that, but he didn't do anything. So, anyone he had with yeah. a rightful mind with, would condemn that and make sure that we we make these guys famous to be known. We should keep these guys in the black book because. No crime can ever go away until it has been closed through the rightful procedures. Yeah. So we must we must make sure that Ugandans, as Ugandans, we must probably put in another gear. Because this is going to continue, and we're going to uh, the period of now very active politics, elections, next year. Thank you, Roman. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the reason why I've been playing this over and over is so that people can actually see and use some of these um clips to tweet you know i will replay it. you i don't want to describe it for the sake of uh but you can see these comrades were driving their motor uh, bikes in uganda they're called motor taxi people use uh, motorcycles for taxi but they escort uh the president most of the time yeah so these soldiers are seen grabbing this guy pinching punching him and doing all sorts. So what happens if they take him to a closed room? Now you can imagine they are passers by and they're doing all this kind of stuff. So what happens behind closed doors? Yeah, so you can imagine. Look, they've all ganged up on one person who doesn't even have a tool or a weapon or whatever. You know? Look at that, look at that. Yeah, so it is sad. Yes, uh, comrades, we are drawing to a close. Um, thank you so much, Ellen Prezo. Let's take uh, uh, comrade Reggie, I think you'll speak last. James, uh, comrade Iga, do come in. Then we'll have James, Reggie, who will then close us down. Yes, comrade Godfrey. Yeah, just a couple of points briefly. Um, I know I said maybe we need to train these guys, offer them high level training, but that's near impossible because when you come to think of it, they've been profiled from almost the, when they are arrested, uh, were abducted, uh, Akileo, yeah? and this is their point of taking one by one, so they leave the president exposed. Yeah? Now, if we were saying, oh, we're going to offer them the training, you know what happens? They will come out with the excuse, oh, they were terrorist training, yeah? and they 
Bangem or any prison. So the only viable solution I have is for our people or citizens to uprise. Yeah? They go, once the big numbers come up on the street, these guys have time to do anything. And if, I, if they try to fire tear gas, that will backfire. People people uh, will become like bees. Yeah? You, 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 you inflict pain, yeah? and the will, the behavior will change. Yeah? So we need a massive uprising. Yeah? And I keep telling that to our people on the ground, that you need to drop that fear. Yeah? Join those, because we've got a few people who are almost well determined, yeah? They are always there, but they are not joined by the majority, yeah? Instead of joining, they sit in the background and cry. Well, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Yes, James William, uh, you can take the mic. Sorry, I was speaking on a muted mic. I was saying thank you so much. And um, I was going back to your point, Ellen Prezo, and I was talking about this. Um, when are we going to learn? When are we going to isolate and boycott? You know, so many people are spending so much money going to places like Cafe Javis. Find out who owns that uh, franchise or organization or whatever it is. Let us boycott some of these things. This Chinatown, these Chinese have oppressed us. You know, the crude pipeline, the ECOP thing, um, they've evicted so many people. And then we go and bless them further. We're showering money. Look at this crowd of people. It's a sea of people in this Chinatown going to buy cheap, uh, perhaps even obsolete items you know, maybe even poisoned with lead and stuff. There's nothing good in this Chinatown, you know. So it is so upsetting to see that Ugandans have failed. You know, we keep saying the dictator has oppressed us, but we are oppressing ourselves. Yeah, so thank you so much, uh, Comrade Ellen Prezo, uh, for pointing that out. Yeah, we need to work on our civil disobedience. Sorry, guys, I've been speaking so much in a muted mic. Yeah, uh, Comrade James, do come in. Then uh, Sister Mimi, I don't know if you're at a demonstration. Are you able to speak to us? Thank you so much um, for the demonstrations. I know you guys today have got a demonstration in California. So we thank you so much. Uh, Comrade James, do come in. Thank you. Uh, Docas, thank you so much. It's good I'm speaking after Reggie because uh, he will be summarizing as a, a consumer of intelligence. <laughs> That's how they call themselves. That's how they are proud. Docas, it's funny I hadn't spoken about the incident that happened in Kampala or on Bobby Wine, but now I have an opportunity to speak about it slightly. Well, uh, uh, Reggie, you'll have to let us know, because I know you're a consumer of this intelligence, what is the, sec the security threat? What's the level? Because it's usually either one, two, three. So what is the level of four? What are we talk looking at? I want to imagine as a, this is intelligence that is shared between Uganda and the USA. And there's a likelihood that uh, the USA was aware that this assassination was going to occur. Because you don't do that and you don't alert the U.S. So the U.S. is aware. Now, I made a tweet, I think, after the U.S. released that warning of a terror attack. What would you call a terror attack? other than what Uganda has just gone through. Because if Bobby Wine had been assassinated, I don't know whether we should be having Uganda today or we would not. Because failing to react also is a different thing which we could also look at seriously. Docas who have been have, holding protests 
calling upon people to join us. The protests were marginal. The younger people who went were, I think, were about 100. And of course, as NOOP, they were took country mobilization. Let's mark that. They took country mobilization despite us calling them to join the protest. The two girls, the three girls whom we must also not forget are still in prison who led a protest, a nude protest. And we need to look at those girls and emphasize. Actually, make a tweet. I should make a very quick tweet before we close and we magnify their plea and what they did. So as USA, it is sad. As USA, it is sad that they knew of this plan. And we need to let USA know that we are not happy. We are not happy because what is the terror warning? What was that terror warning if not an assassination of Bobby Wine? That was shared as the two countries that share military intelligence. And that one, that's what I said Reggie should explain a little because the USA warned Ugandans, warned their citizens up to now, I think it is at a certain level, which means the US knew Bob Wine was going to be assassinated. And that information is shared because it's such a shock. It would be a big thing to catch up with those guys in that country. So Reggie, you'll talk to that, but as citizens, let's let USA know that we are not comfortable. We can't continue living in fear, walk in fear. Ugandans are there on the streets. I mean, the, the army is already there all the time, 24-7, as if we are at war. AK-47 is on the road. You have not seen an AK-47 for nine years I've been here. For nine years I've been here, I've not seen an AK-47. And uh, just responding with a small response to what, uh, what LM Prezo has said. One of the things that Ugandans need to be helped on is to empower Reg, you know, uh, uh, I have not been me. I've no, I was never woken up by Bobby Wine because they got me doing what I'm doing today. I have been doing it from 1988. I stopped terrorism in Busia, and you can't do it there. You can't pick anyone. So there is something that we need to do: worship, cult leadership. Ugandans just think a leader is one person. Ugandans don't see as leadership is in them. Nobody stopped terror in Busia. And in fact, after Bobby Wine had been shot, I called Busia immediately to put our people on alert. Because for us, we get concerned. For us, the word is Mabanga and <laughs> Regin. Remember, I called you. So what do we do? Ours was, what's the situation like? We consider any blood lost in Busia very important. So this is something I want Ugandans also to know that let's learn to defend anyone. It's not only his excellence, as you say. If somebody killed me, Ugandans should feel it. That's why I'm like, Chituma is attacking me now. And that attack of where he has even gone ahead to say he will, he will not spare anyone who attacks him. It's me. It's me who attacked him. I told him, I know you. Why are you doing this? And he answered me, actually, he answered me straight. And now it has become viral and on me. And I'm saying, no, I'm still warning him because I don't care. I have seen the police. Me, I have seen policemen dead in hospital. Even here, I see policemen shot between fighting between. So he should not just say anything to me to threaten me and we watch. What I'm saying as citizens, Everyone, as we speak here, matters. Matters. Whether it is Dokas, whether it is Mimi, any blood of a Ugandan. Like I'm saying in my community, for us, we say Mavanga. When you hear us saying Mavanga, just run away. We should treasure every Ugandan. Why should we continue having people dying? Dokas, that's my contribution. I want to make a tweet on those girls who who have been reduced to nude protesters. No, it is destitution, it's despondency. Ugandans, what are we as a nation? Thank you. 
Thank you so much, uh, Comrade James. Please do share the, the tweet of the terrorist warning because I would like to put out a tweet as well so that we can amplify because we need to go to that original clip that they shared warning that there will be a terrorist startup. Let us attach the videos or clips of what happened uh, to Mr. Chagulanyi and then ask them, is this the, the, the terrorist you're talking about? So if you do share that tweet uh, with us, uh, we will make tweets during the course of the week. And guys, this protest doesn't end here. We have to protest throughout the week. Let us send tweets out. Thank you so much, uh, Comrade James. Thank you so much, each and everyone. You know, uh, Comrade, uh, Sister Mimi, I don't know if you're able to come in. Please do signal. Otherwise, uh, Comrade Reggie, speak to us, respond to Comrade James, and then we'll see if we can get Sister Mimi before we close. Thank you. Yes, Dakas, thank you so much. Now, no. Almost I'm here from Hong Kong. William, Ebusia, you could have hung no. I've been to your whole of Villae. The Sendari Ebusia, Rambo, Leda. Ava Samia, but who the Hamuno, your Ruhola, Chamu Moni. Having said that, um, we are, we are at level, it's called a level three. There are four levels. Okay. So that is a level three terror threat. So level four would be when there is uh, some yeah. kind of attack like Al Qaeda, but um, <sighs> intelligence is not clear, okay? Because when a country is susceptible to terror attacks, there has to be a clear um, message from. Mostly, the, these known terror groups issue messages. They always pride themselves in everybody knowing that they are they are the ones who are fighting because they are jihadists. So what we see is mostly silent about where all this is coming from. So, by counterintelligence, this is this is uh, wherever it's coming from. It is not. The, the those organ one of those organizations like Al Qaeda has or or those terrorist organizations. I was in Iraq, and I was in Iraq for a long time, and I watched what these people did, and we did um, uh, uh, counterintelligence on uh, uh, terrorism. So I know how these guys operate. What is happening in Uganda is just cementing dictatorship. By this time, everybody should know. So we are level three. We have always been level three. I remember there's a time I was supposed to visit Uganda, and I said, no, you can't go because Uganda is level three terror uh, threat. And I, when, since when did Ugandans uh, become uh, terrorists? This is a time when uh, uh, one of the game parks, people were uh, attacked in the game park. So anyway, eventually I was allowed to go. So, yeah, that is that. The other thing is that uh, on a professional level, this non-violence um, uh, statement or the word non-violence is so ambiguous, okay? So, we are under attack. Bobby Wine is under attack. If law enforcement becomes political and clearly fights as a personal army for somebody, you have a right to stand your ground. Of course, you have to be smart and know if you're outnumbered, you're outnumbered. But you have to be intelligent enough to know when to stand your ground. Because if somebody is being aggressive, what they use, they, it's, professionally, it's aggression. Okay? So, Somebody is being aggressive illegally towards you. You have a right to stand your ground and defend yourself. Defending yourself is violence. Okay, so when you use the word non-violence, you need to be specific. Okay, so you 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 can't just say no, we are non-violent. No, if I'm going to defend myself, I'm going to be violent. So there's a point 
where in self defense non violence is inevitable otherwise we're just, just going to be cabbages that somebody you know comes and just speaks on and does whatever they do i have a right to protect myself and that is called defense the aggressor we already know we can see from those videos the biases and lies so it is very clear right now anytime these guys are throwing lies we need to throw those videos at them because those were clearly clearly illegal aggression towards uh chagulani sentam then there was a question that was asked about uh what is something that ugandans should do that they have not been doing okay ugandans should hold individuals accountable by exposing them they should expose them expose their villages expose their name put them out there so that the world knows because these are agents of evil what do you do to agents of evil you expose them you put them to the light even the bible says when evil is exposed to the light it loses its power so that's what we need to continue doing and i like it that these guys got the those videos and started exposing individuals that are try who are trying to assassinate the elected president of uganda robert chakulani tentamu so don't be bullied do not be bullied when they say non violence professionally it's nonsense because when you're defending yourself you're being violent we need to just be clear we're not using guns to fight the regime but we are going to defend ourselves with everything possible because we are being attacked and we are being attacked so having said that lastly let's respect professionals and use professionals because every been everybody has been logical about what should have been done what should not have been done how about finding a professional to explain to you exactly what was right what was wrong what was legal and what was illegal okay because it gets confusing you know um so yes let's do that and i challenge you as a professional to get a professional wherever you are out there and, and let them help teaching uh this this personal protection of uh, the elected president counter intelligence and also pp protect protecting vips how to protect them because what was done out there no we cannot continue being petty and professional and we expect the best and then we cannot continue being reckless because next time next time our recklessness can cost us so we should learn from this and put it out there that personal protection for the elected president of uganda should be clearly trained so at that point nokas check with mimi and see if mimi has something to say and we take this on thank you yes uh sister mimi uh do you have a moment to speak to us what's happening on ground your end are you already at a protest or en route Yes, yes, you're unmuted. So do we uh um, Okay, I see James is hand. James, you have a few seconds and then we close. Thank you. James? Oh, you're not. And then Comrade Ellen Prezo, one minute. Well, I just wanted to emphasize that the tweet you requested i have made it because uh, at the embassy us embassy knew bob wine was going to be killed uganda knew bob wine was going to be killed it's a, it's it's in, 
a shared military intelligence that they had. That's why they released that terror alert. So we need to condemn this. They can't continue keeping us in these cycles. Terror is in Uganda. And uh, it's good Reggie has explained to you that we are at level three. Because anytime we are moving with an AK-47 on the road, that is an assault rifle. Why are we carrying those guns all the time? People imagine we have a security threat all the time. And then for the women, I've also made a tweet. Please, please, women, please, everyone, continue sharing those tweets of those women. Make them known. Make them circulate across the world. I have put the last two tweets that you requested, Dr. So let people look at them and share them and magnify them and use other words. Don't just use my words. Use words. Let USA know that we know the terror information was shared between the two countries. And it would be sad for Uganda for us to start running because somebody is killed under their watch. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, Sister Mimi, I see you're ready now. Um, we don't hear you, sis. You either need to increase the volume on the side or something is happening. Sis, we can't hear you. Okay, we will share your demonstration in uh, later on. I do believe you're on your way to the demonstration or perhaps it's happening. Thank you, thank you so much. You and the team in California, we thank you. Um, and we thank all uh, those that have protested the UK chapter, thank you so much. Thank you so much for confronting those so-called business men. You know, what business is there to promote in Uganda? These guys are just busy killing people, you know? I do not see what they've come to promote. They need to sort matters out on ground and provide services, people are dying, you know, people are being abducted. Look, broad daylight, how they abduct, they torture and beat people like that. So what happens in the darkness? Um, thank you. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for putting up uh, that front. And let's continue to protest, not just because uh, Mr. Chagulani was shot, but because one of us was injured. And we do not know how many other people these guys injure every minute, not even every hour, but every minute. How many people are they torturing, murdering? healing. So let us protest. Let us not take things uh, for granted. We are closing, guys. Uh, Comrade Ellen Prezo, just a few seconds, and then we hand over the mic to Reggie to close us down. Thank you so much, uh, bro, for the Zoom support, and always thank you. Yes, Comrade. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Docus, uh, can you confirm that you are loud and clear? Yes, we can hear you. Nobody is free until everybody is free. Thank you. <laughs> I like your profile. Yeah, so uh, it's similar to what um, Kwame Nkrumah said in the 1957 when Ghana uh, got its independence, that uh, Ghana is not independent until the whole Africa is free. So. Um, in my concluding remarks, I would appeal to all of us because I believe that whoever is on this uh, Zoom is already converted. Let's go to work. We still have a lot of work to do. We cannot really tap on our shoulders until we cannot see Museven and his, his system, Museveniism as a system. So we must deal with the members of parliament, the people that are too close to us, that stay in our communities. I like, I like it when Regi said that we should expose, expose those people. If you know anything that that person has done in their communities, expose them. Let the community get to know what these guys are doing, either in their offices, 
in parliament or at their local council offices. We must expose them. Any person that uses our money, our taxpayers' money, in leadership or helps the oppressor to, to continue oppressing us, the same way we go on the streets, either in UK, I mean in Europe or US and other places, Canada and other places, to protest against the environment, political environment in Uganda. is the same thing that we must do while speaking to our families back in Uganda. Because the, the, the Western development partners have a role to play. But the heavy lifting is going to be done by us, the Ugandans, on the ground. It's not going to be done by the Americans or the Europeans. They're going to play their roles, but the heavy lifting is going to be done by us, the Ugandans. So let's go to work, fold our sleeves, and then go to work. And of course, call on every Ugandan to, to take charge of the way our country is managed. I thank you very much. Until then, I sign out. Lucas, are you going to call on Mimi again? Oh, sorry. I was speaking in a muted mic again. Thank you so much, comrades. I was still sharing James's tweet on the screen so that we can go amplify sound. This is how you go and amplify. You like the tweet, then you click on this button to re reply. Yeah, so yeah, you click on there to reply. After that, you retweet, you repost after you've... Uh, responded to Comrade James's tweet. That's an example on how you can amplify sound. Go to each and every tweet of Comrade James and of course all the other comrades, our president's tweets, our um, leader of opposition. Let's go and find those tweets. Craft tweets yourselves and let's amplify sound. Yes, uh, thank you so much uh, comrades for all that you continue to do. We are not free till we are free. Yes, and thank you so much for each and everyone that has made it to the Zoom. Those that will be listening in later because this Zoom is streamed to Facebook. Uh, for those that want to catch up, do catch up. Thank you so much. Continue to amplify sound. Yes, uh, Comrade Reggie, I will unmute everybody and let you take over, close us down. Thank you so much, um, Sister Mimi. I will stop the share. Yes. Over to you, brother. Yeah, it's still Operation Kulavisa. Let's let's expose this evil agent, the agents of evil. These guys are agents of evil. No masses, expose. All right, everybody's unmute. Guys, you all have the permission to just click unmute. Let's hear your voices. Okay. Let's try this. People power. Our power. 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 Let's try this again. People power. Our power. power. I feel like you can do better than this. The people power. Our, Our power. power. Our power. People power. People power. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll start with uh, the Uganda version uh, in, in, in respect for Africa. And then we've got the English version in respect for the Western world. All right. In three, two, one, when the struggle is going, we shall wear the crown. We shall wear the crown. We shall wear the victor's crown. When the struggle is over, we shall wear the victor's crown. Oh, 
Bagalanumena, Mukama Kumide, Tawatu Damu, Mueda. 